Welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 34 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about hidden fields in ASP.NET, when to use a hidden field, hidden field alternatives, advantages and disadvantages of using a hidden field. The hidden field control is used to store a value that needs to be persisted across posts to the server, but you don't want the control or its value to be visible to the user. For example, when editing and updating an employee record, we don't want the user to see the employee ID, so we will store this employee ID in a hidden field, which then can be used on the server to update the correct employee's record. Let's actually look at this example in action. I have a simple table here called TBL employees which stores the ID name, gender and department name columns. Let's display this on a web form so that the end user can edit them. So I have a simple ASP.NET web application project here. Let's drag and drop a hidden field control onto the web form. Like any other standard ASP.NET control, the hidden field control has an ID and run it is equal to server attributes. Now we want to display the name, gender and department name columns on the web form. So we need uh, you know, the respective te text box controls to display them. So just to save some time in typing, I have this HTML already um, you know, typed here. And if you look at the HTML, it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing, you know, strange there. It's a simple table, uh, and then we have TR and two TDs within that. You know, basically one TD to display the, you know, the text name, and then a text box control for that. And similarly for gender and department. Okay, so obviously, you know, when I load the page, when the web form gets loaded, we want to load the data. Again, we need to write ADO.NET code for that. We need to connect to the SQL server. So in web.config file, we have the database connection string. And we have spoken about all these in the ADO.NET video series. Uh, so if you haven't watched ADO.NET, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. So I have written a simple method here to load the employee details and all this method does basically it reads the web.config connection string and then uh, loads the data from the database table. So if you look at that, we have the connection string, we created the connection object and we have this query select ID name gender from that table and we are only loading one employee's record here 202 which is Steve's record. And then what we are doing here is after we execute the query, we are using the reader looping through each row and then taking the name, gender, department ID, department name and the ID. If you look at that, the name, gender and department name are stored in the respective text boxes, txt name, txt gender and txt department. Those are the text box IDs that we have here. Okay, but then the interesting thing to note here is that we are not displaying on the form. If you look at that, we don't have the ID being displayed. Okay, but then we are storing the ID within the hidden field. And look at that hidden field ID, the ID of the hidden field control is hidden field one. And we are using the value property of the hidden field to actually set, store the value within that. For example, if we want to store a value within a text box, we use the text property, but to store a value within the hidden field, we use the value property. And you will understand just in a bit why are we actually storing this ID in this hidden field? What is the purpose of that? The purpose of this is later when we actually use the update button, when we click that, we need to know which employee record we are updating. And we will read this ID from this hidden field and then perform the update on the correct record. Okay, since this is a hidden field, you know, this is not visible. Now, when we actually run this, now we only have this method here. Let's call this on the page load. So if not is post back in the sense if it's not a post back, if it is the initial get request, call the load employee method. So obviously when we run this now, what's going to happen? The application is going to execute that query, load the data, you know, the name, gender and department name will be displayed in these text boxes and the hidden field, the ID column value will be stored in this hidden field. Okay, now let's actually have a button control on the web form which can actually update the employee's record. And obviously to do that, let's drag and drop a button control. So let's use another TR here and then let's use a TD and another TD because each TD contains two cells. One will actually update the employee's record. So let's say this button 
is used to update the record. After we update the record, we want another button control to actually load the updated employee's record. So let's call this load employee. So we have two buttons. Okay, so when we click this update button, we actually want to update the employee's record. And I have this already typed, so just to save some time again. So this is all ADO.NET code beyond the scope of this article. So I have just typed this to save some time in typing. So if you look at this again, all we are doing here is we are reading the connection string and we are creating a SQL connection object. We are using a parameterized query here. Update TBL employee set name is equal to at name, gender is equal to at gender, department name is equal to at department name. So all these are parameters. So we need to supply the values for these parameters. And then where ID is equal to at ID. Again, that's a, that's a parameter. Okay. Now you know that whenever we run this application on the UI, you know, when we run this now, it actually loads the data into the respective text box controls and then it displays the name gender department let's say for example i change the department to it and then when i perform update so steve you're updating steve's record but then within your table there might be multiple steves so how will you know which steve record you want to update okay that's why we use ids but then if you look at this web form we don't have the employee id displayed here but then if you remember when we actually loaded this data we stored the employee ID value within this hidden field. Okay, so we can use the value from that hidden field and then update the correct employee's record. So if you look at this here, after we prepare the SQL command using this parameterized query, we are adding the values for these parameters. So for at name, the value is coming from this txt name text box, gender from that txt gender and department name from txt department text box but then the employee id where is that coming from that is coming from the hidden field and then what we are doing we are opening the connection uh, command dot execute non query closing the connection and we are just emptying the text boxes just to indicate that we have actually performed the update okay and then we have another button after we actually update that we want to load the data so let's go ahead and call this method once again on the button click okay so all we need to inspect here is let's put a breakpoint in this load employee method because this gets called when the web form first loads so that we can actually check you know is the uh, employee ID being loaded into that hidden field. So as the page hits the breakpoint, okay, so F10, F10, let's navigate through and look at this. When we get to this point, okay, so if you look at this hidden field, it's empty at the moment. When I press F10, look at that, it actually stores that 202. As we press F5, the page get displayed and we can change let's say for example it's IT we are changing Steve's department currently it's payroll we are changing that to IT and when we hit the update button it should perform the update and if you remember this is the update button code and now it's trying to retrieve the value from the hidden field because we need the ID to update the correct employees record okay so let's put that breakpoint there and let's try to click this update button so the moment we click that update button, it gets into this code block. Let's loop through. Okay. Now, if you look at this hidden field dot value, look at that 202. We are able to retrieve that. So to set or get the value from the hidden field, we use the value property. And then it updates the correct record. So let's press F5. And if you look at that, it emptied those labels. And when I click load data, load employee again, this method gets called. And we should have the updated department there. So basically here we have seen how to use the hidden field to store the values that we don't want to show to the end user but then we are using them for a purpose. For example when we are updating this employee record you know just to make sure that we are updating the correct employees record we are storing the employee ID in that hidden field. 
So value property of the hidden value is used to get or set the value. The value is stored as a string. So if you look at this value property of the hidden field, its data type is string. So if you are storing, I mean basically you can store anything, dates, numbers, etc. But then since it is storing them as strings, when you try to do some comparisons or something, you need to cast that to the appropriate type. Okay, so the value is stored as string in the hidden field. View state, in fact, uses hidden field to maintain state across postback. Now, if you remember, if I right click on this, you know, these controls, they are maintaining their state across postbacks. We know that web applications work on a stateless protocol, but how are these controls, this ASP.NET controls, able to remember their state? Because they are using a, a built in mechanism called a view state. And what is this view state? It's actually a hidden field. It's making use of hidden field behind the scenes. For if I right click on the page and say view source, look at that. There is this underscore view state. And that, look at that its input type is hidden. So this view state field uses, I mean, it uses hidden fields to retain state across post back. Hidden field is rend rendered as input type is equal to hidden. So that's another thing. Um, you know, from an ASP.NET perspective, this is a hidden field control. But then, you know, when it gets rendered, it gets rendered as an HTML element whose input type is hidden. And that's what we have just seen. So if I right click on that and say view page source, our input, our hidden field name is hidden field one. And if you look at that, it is rendered as input type is equal to hidden. Alternatives for hidden field. Now, why did we use this hidden field? Basically, it's to store that employee ID, which we don't want to show to the end user because that's not editable and it doesn't make any sense to show that field to the end user. Now, do, do we really have to use hidden fields for this purposes? No. In fact, you can store that in a text box and then, um, uh, you know, you can set the display style to none. It won't even show that. So that's one of the ways. Other alternatives for the hidden fields are to use view state or query strings, session state, and cookies. And if you remember, view state, in fact, uses hidden fields behind the scenes. Okay, but then view state, query strings, you know, these are used as alternatives for the hidden field. But the problem is session state and cookies, they will be accessible from other pages as well. Now here, we, we just storing the hidden field on this page in that hidden field. And then when I navigate away from this page, it's automatically lost. But then whereas session and cookies, they will be there until their timeout expires. Okay. But whereas view state and hidden field data is available only on that page and it is automatically lost when we navigate away from the page. So depending on the application requirement, we choose the appropriate technique to, you know, basically uh, store the values. Advantages of hidden field. Hidden field data is lost when we navigate away from the page, so it doesn't require any explicit cleanup task. And another advantage is that it is accessible from the client side scripts. Let's actually look at this in action. Uh, we know that when the page gets loaded, it's actually storing the hidden field, uh, the value within the hidden field. So if you look at this web form, we are storing the employee ID within that hidden field. Now let's say I have a button here and another button, for example. Let's put another button there. But then I'm going to put, let's stop the debugging first. So let's put an HTML button there. So when I click this HTML button, what I want to do basically is um, I want to write a JavaScript function which can go and retrieve the value from that hidden field. Basically, we want to prove the fact that JavaScript, the client side scripts, can access the hidden field data. So all you have to do is let's write a simple function. So script language is equal to type slash JavaScript. So I'm going to write a function here. So function, let's call this get hidden field data. And all this function does is within this document, there is a function called get element by ID. We'll talk about JavaScript in detail in a later session, but here the whole idea is to prove that um, view hidden field data can be accessible by JavaScript. 
so get element by id and if you look at the id of the hidden field here it is hidden field one so i'm going to pass in that dot value will give us that value back and all i want to do is i want to use an alert javascript alert function to show that value so probably we want to append that to my employee ID is equal to whatever that's returned back and we want to call this function when we click this button so I'm gonna call this within that button 3 underscore click this is the HTML button so on the client click event we are calling that JavaScript function so now when we run this when the page gets loaded we know that the employee ID will be stored on this hidden field and when I click this button look at that employee ID is equal to 202 so basically this proves the fact that hidden field is accessible to client side scripts and the disadvantages of hidden field hidden field data can be seen by viewing the page source and we have just seen that so if we right click on the page and say view page source you know you can actually see that hidden field and the data that is stored in that so input type is equal to hidden and you look at the value 202 it is stored in a plain text format so obviously hidden field is not uh, you know it's n it, it never should be used to store confidential data on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day